now we will um, proceed with Dr. Mozamo Siddiqui, who's going to give us uh, a tafsir of the ayahs that were uh, recited today. Dr. Siddiqui, you may join. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa manwala. First of all, I want to say Ramadan Mubarak to all of you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, bless your families. Uh, it is sad that we are not in the masjid. We are looking forward, but uh, uh, whatever we have, inshallah, we take benefit of it and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, remove this affliction, this problem from us and from the whole humanity and bring us back to our places of worship, inshallah, so that we make our masajid, inshallah, masajid that are full of people, full of activities, and we pray there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this month of Ramadan for all of us and also help us to do our siyam, our qiyam, inshallah, in the best possible way. There is a great opportunity, inshallah, you can do that at home um, and uh, with your family. So do that, inshallah. Uh, now you can pray a Shah prayer, and then after that you pray Taraweeh prayer. Uh, you wear a eight rakah or 20 rakah, whatever is possible for you. You can do that. And also after, uh, Tonight, Alhamdulillah, I will listen to uh, the first juz of the Quran, first uh, juz and a quarter. Inshallah, for four nights, we'll be receiving, we'll be listening to one and a quarter juz, and uh, in this way, in four nights, we'll complete five juz of the Quran, and then after that, we'll have one juz per night. In this way, we can finish, Inshallah, the Quran on the 29th night of this month. May Allah SWT accept from us. So uh, we begin with the uh, Basmala, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, this is the ayah that is recited before every surah except the surah number nine, surah at tawbah And there are details about why this is not recited before surah at tawbah But uh, Bismillah is very important. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in abbreviation we call it Basmala, and it is in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the compassionate. So whatever we do, we should start with Bismillah. Kullu amrin zibalin lam yubda fiya bismillah fa huwa akhdaj. Rasulullah sallallahu said, any important matter where you don't begin with Bismillah, uh, that will not get the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is like something is broken, something is cut off. So uh, Bismillah is very important. Bismillah is uh, acknowledgement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Bismillah is also dua. We are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we begin in his name. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to complete our action, whatever we are doing. And at the same time, believer, or uh, when, is, when he or she says Bismillah, uh, he will not be doing anything haram, anything forbidden, because how can you say something haram or do something haram and then say Bismillah? So Bismillah reminds the believer that our action must be good action, right action, appropriate action, acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why it is emphasized that say Bismillah. When you do anything, when you start your eating, when you, when you, when you start any work, um, when you any important thing that you do. Say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And of course, when you recite the Quran, so you begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some uh, people think that uh, Bismillah is part of Surah Al-Fatiha. So they recite uh, Bismillah uh, even in the Salat, in the prayer. They first loudly recite Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the prayers in which we recite uh, the Quran in uh, loudly, such as Fajr prayer and Maghrib and Isha prayers. Uh, so when they say, and the Imam says Bismillah, uh, Surah Al-Fatiha, before that say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In some other schools, uh, Bismillah is part of the Quran, but not part of Surah Al-Fatiha or any Surah of the Quran. So they just begin with the beginning 
I like Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Surah Al-Fatiha is uh, the surah that is the first surah of the Quran, although it was not the first surah that was revealed, but it is the first surah um, in the Quran, and it is the surah that is recited in every salat, in every rak'ah. The Prophet said that La salat al-imallam yaqra bi fatiha fil kitab The salat is not valid, salat is not complete for anyone who does not recite Surah Al-Fatiha. And this surah is also called Sab'um min al-Masani, seven oft repeated verses. And that's what people do. I mean, every day, how many times you recite Surah Al-Fatiha? So Surah Al-Fatiha is very important. Uh, and a uh, lot of people, they recite it, but they do not pay attention to its meaning. This is a, uh, Surah Al-Fatiha is the introduction to the Quran. Surah Al-Fatiha is the summary of the Quran, Quranic teaching. And Surah Al-Fatiha is also a dua. We ask, say first of all, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the worlds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created everything. And he is the one who controls everything. Everything is under his uh, authority, under his sovereignty. And he is the one who sustains them. He is the one who provides for them. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And then you say, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Just like you say, Bismillah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman is the one whose mercy is Lord of mercy. Plenty of mercy. Abundant mercy. And Ar-Rahim is the one whose mercy is permanent, always. The most merciful, most compassionate. And then you immediately remember that there will be a day of judgment because whatever he has provided, and he is merciful, but he is also uh, the one who is, is just, uh, and you want that people do right thing, does not take advantage of all the good things and misbehave. So immediately we say, Vimaliki Yomizdin, master of the day of judgment. So there will be a day of judgment, and he is the one who has full authority on that day, the master, the owner of that day, and the, and the lord of that day. And also some people recite it as Maliki Yomizdin, the king of that day. So Malik and Malik, these are two qiraat, two recitations that people do, and both of them are very meaningful. Malik means the king of the day, so he is the full authority, sovereign of that day, and Malik is the one who controls everything under his control, under his power, is that day, and no one can, 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 can force him to do anything, because he is the Malik. And then after acknowledging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, glory and, and greatness, and then after that you say, Iya kanabud wa Iya kanastain. You alone we worship, and you don't say nabuduka, but we say Iya kanabud. So you bring the, the the ka and add before that Iya, and so that is to emphasize to emphasize that it is you, you we worship, and your help we seek. So Allah, we, we don't worship anyone except you, and we need your help. We need your help to help us. And guide us unto the straight path. The straight path is the path of life where there is no crookedness, there is no deception, there is no fraud, there is no lie. That is the, the straightforward way. So make us a straightforward people following the straightforward way guide us into that and not only just show us that straight path but help us to walk that path as if you hold our hand and take us to that path so that we will follow all the time that path sirat al ihdina sirat al mustaqim and then you say further sirat al ladina an'amta alayhim the path of those whom you favored and those were the prophets of allah they were the righteous people of all generations and uh, the martyrs who gave their life for the cause of Allah, Sirat al Ladina and Amta Alayim, Zarikal and Allah Alayim and Nabiyin, our Siddiqin, our Shuhada, our Salihin, our Hassan, our Laik Rafiqa. So, those people who receive Allah's blessings and favors in the past, we want that path. So, not anybody's path, but the path of the righteous people and Ghair al Maktubi Alayim al Dalin, not those who received anger, whose portion was anger that is Allah's anger and they received that anger because they knew what is right and they did not do it 
So that's why they incurred the anger of Allah and well of Dhalin and not those who went astray. That means they uh, did not know the right path and they did not look for the right path. And they did not search for the, for the guidance of Allah. So Allah save us from that and keep us on the right path. So here you have Tawheed, here you have Allah's power, Allah's majesty, and then you also have the belief in the Akhirah, the last day, and also who guides the right path is the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Tawheed, Risala, and Akhirah, three very basic principles of Islam are mentioned in this surah. And then at the same time, it is a dua, asking Allah to guide us, to help us. We pray to you and we need your help to keep us on the right path and help us in all our difficulty, in all our problems. So that's why this surah is so important. It is the Ummul Kitab. It is the essence of the Quran. And it is also called Al Asas, the foundation, uh, the foundation of the Quran, the Ummul Kitab. And also it is called Kafiyah, sufficient, Shafiyah. That is, if anybody has any problem, physical problem, uh, uh, psychological problem, stress, and difficulty, it is good to recite this surah. The surah has a great power of healing. That's why it is called Al-Shafiyah, Al-Kafiyah, Al-Asas, Umm Al-Quran, and many other names of that are given for this surah. Then we started Surah Al-Baqarah. Surah Al-Baqarah is the longest surah of the Quran. And uh, this surah is a Madani surah. It was revealed in Medina. And it has uh, the history as well as it has ahkam. Uh, it tells us akhbar and ahkam. Akhbar is that what happened to the people in the past and then also what is going, what we should do as a community. It is, uh, the, 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 this it begins with this uh, as a response to the Surah Al-Fatiha. Uh, you said in Surah Al-Fatiha, Ihdin al-Sirat al mustaqim guide us into the straight path. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the whole Quran and the first surah that you have after that is Surah Al-Baqarah. And in that surah, Allah is a Zalik al-Kitab al fi hudal lil muttaqin Guidance for those who are looking for guidance. Muttaqin, the people who are uh, conscious of Allah the people who want to live in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is a guidance for them. Those who are not conscious of Allah, those who do not want the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, this book, they may read it, but they will not receive any help from that. Khudalil muttaqeen. And then who are their muttaqeen? Those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believe in all the things that are unseen, uh, that is Allah and the Akhirah, and, uh, and the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then um, and those who, who believe that which was revealed to the Prophet وسلم, and revealed before that to other prophets of Allah and they believe in the last day. So this, these are the qualities of those people who are the believers. They are the guided people. So this is the book in which there is no doubt and this book is the book of guidance for such people. But then there are people who will not accept this book so they will deny it. And for them, no preaching will help. Whether you warn them or you don't warn them, they are not going to believe. And the third group is the group, they will say that they believe, but actually they will not believe. They will behave in a different way. And that is the group of hypocrites. And the Quran says that hypocrites actually are going to deceive themselves. They are not deceiving Allah. They may deceive some people, but not deceive all people. And especially they cannot deceive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the sickness of, uh, of a person, uh, that is the spiritual sickness of a person. And uh, it is very important that belief must be strong, sincere, and there should not be any hypocrisy in, in our actions. And then after that, the, the invitation to all human beings, Ya Yunas or Budu, O people worship your Lord who created you, or those who were before you, and this is, if you do that, then you will be the, will continue on the path of taqwa. And after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the story of the creation of human being. Adam alayhi salam, and Allah said to the angels, I'm going to place a, a khalifa on the earth. That means I give him the authority, I give him trusteeship, 
the human being will be the trustee of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And after mentioning the story of Adam alayhi salam, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a number of uh, ayat, uh, the story of Bani Israel. The people who received the divine guidance, the divine message, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent prophet after prophet among them, and some of them accepted the message, some of them they did not behave in the right way. In this way, the believers are told that their action should not be that way, that you receive the message and you receive the covenant of Allah and then you turn away from that. After that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Ibrahim alayhi salam and his family and the building of the Kaaba and the, and the coming of the last prophet as the result of the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So you have uh, this surah, Surah Al-Baqarah has 40 rukur. So it's a long surah and it has a beautiful message. It has a very comprehensive message. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Shaitan will not enter the house in which the surah is recited. And this means that not just recited, but recited with understanding. And the household people follow this, the message of this surah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this surah our guide and help us to understand it. And inshallah, we'll continue tomorrow also. We'll listen part of this surah. And uh, may Allah SWT accept from us. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa waqna ala wa na. Rabbana fuqillana zunubana wa kafir anna sayyatina wa tawfana wa ala baab. Rabbi fi al-warham wa anta khayr rahimeen. Rabbi fi al-warham wa anta khayr rahimeen. Allahumma inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husna ibadati. Allahumma wa fiqna liwa tuhibba wa tarda. صلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه محمد وآله وأصحابه وباهي بعين رحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين. Now please uh, pray your Isha prayer and also pray the Taraweeh prayer. And Taraweeh prayer is two raka, two raka. You can, uh, if you want, you can sit down for uh, for a short time after four raka, and then you continue uh, this way twenty raka, and then after that. If uh, you want to pray with her, you can pray with her immediately after that. Or if you want to get up early uh, for your suhoor uh, and uh, just about 15, 20 minutes before that, uh, you can pray with her at that time. Or you can pray some more prayers that are known as tahajjud prayer. So you can pray. So qiyamul layl, taraweeh, tahajjud, uh, all of these are the prayers of the night. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us that we pray these prayers and receive the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Dr. Siddiqui. And that concludes our program for tonight. And as a reminder, um, you can, if you have any questions about uh, programming for Ramadan, uh, you can visit the ISSC's Ramadan website at ramadan.issc masjid.org. Um, our next program, of course, is going to be at 1 p.m. Uh, uh, tomorrow, where we'll have Hafiz Nabi uh, reciting Surah Al-Kahf, followed by Dr. Siddiqui's Friday message. Jazakallah khair. As-salamu alaykum.